What's up everybody? My name is Ron Empire and welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you my search method for finding the amber larva point of interest. First, what is an amber larva? Well, let's take a look here in my inventory and I've got an amber larva here. The amber larva is an epic food item that you can find in the game. When consumed raw or cooked, can give you a permanent max health increase by 50 points. So at the top left corner here, I have my health bar showing 1449. If I were to eat this, it would give me 1499, and that would be permanent for the rest of the game. Now notice, this says can be cooked. Remember how I mentioned you can consume it raw or cooked? Well, you're going to want to cook this item instead of eating it raw, okay? Because, and let's take a look at my skill tree here, or skill, uh, my uh, cooking skills. Notice it says extra cooked food chance, right? At max cooking skill, I've got max 100 out of 100. It shows 20% extra cooked food chance. Okay, so what this means is that when you when you do some cooking with the amber larva, right? So if you drop it in your cooking pot, and here I've got you know some amber larva cooked before, and these are the things that I've actually cooked it with, right? So if you drop this in here and then you cook it with something else, and then the item comes out over here, you have a 20% chance uh, when picking up this item off the uh, the cooking pot, it will proc and give you a second cooked item. This means it's possible for you to get 100 points of health instead of just plus 50. So here, I, I would probably get, you know, if the if I did proc this uh, cook chance, I will probably get uh, 15, uh, 49 instead of just the plus 50 points, right? And uh, check out the description uh, in the video here down below where I provide you a link to, to demonstrate the... Um, the cooked uh, food item procking, right? So uh, I, I actually have managed to proc the, um, the the extra cooked food chance a, a number of times. So you can you can check that out and see see how that works. Okay, at the moment there are two food items in the game that can give you permanent hit point gain. The other item besides the amber larva is the giant mushroom. It gives you plus. 25 hit points instead of the the 50 right and this is item is actually a rare item this one is an epic item okay uh, one of the other questions that people commonly ask is uh, can you cook like two amber larvas together so you know notice if the cooking pot you know you can mix two items in right so some people ask you know can you can you do two two amber larvas will it will it give you plus 50 or will it only give you or you know will it only give you plus 50? Or will it give you a hundred? And the answer to that is it does actually give you um, a plus one hundred, right? So if you were to do this and and this, right, that will actually show up as as plus um, plus twenty uh, plus fifty instead of just plus twenty five. Normally, the rule for cooking, um, if so, if you were to cook this and cook this item, the highest the highest here is plus fifty food, and the highest here is plus eleven food you'll actually get the plus 15 food. So generally they take the, the two highest uh, stat, uh, the highest stat between the two if, if they repeat. Uh, but in this case, you are able to combine the two. So if you were to combine this one and this one, you'll actually get plus 75. It won't just be plus 50 here, it'll actually be plus 75 if you were to combine this one and this one together. All right, so I just wanted to clarify that in case uh, some people wanted to know. All right, um, uh, so you're wondering, is there a cap limit to how many of these items you can eat? Currently, there is no in-game cap limit on how many of the items you can consume, uh, you can cook and consume. You can raise your max health points almost indefinitely. Okay, now the question is, why chase amber larva for, for high health, you ask? Well, besides the obvious benefit of staying alive for a very long time, you know, you're, if you have like a super high health point, you can actually take a lot of hits. You can also defeat enemies fairly easily when combined with the rune song. 
Let's, so let's take a look at the rune song here. So see how the rune song sword says in green, plus 15% chance on hit to kill any target that has lower health than you. So if the target has lower health than you, then you can actually instantly kill them on the first hit uh, if that 15% chance procs. I mean, it can proc in any, any number of hits, uh, you know. But on the first hit, it is possible for you to instant kill a boss. So to get this health up, you're going to have to consume either the Amber Larva or the Giant Mushroom, right? Because uh, once, I mean, the only, I mean, the only other way to increase your health, but this, this has a finite number, right? This here says plus uh, 100 max health. So once you max out your vitality, you know, that, that's it. And then I believe this one right here, right? Yeah. So this here and this here can increase your, your health. Um, but this is finite, right? But these two here would be, um, would not be finite. It'd be infinite or almost infinite. Just, you know, however big the number to represent the health, uh, the, the max health will be, and that's an internal, um, game coding variable, in integer variable, but that's just a technical, you know, thing. Um, oh, oh one more thing I, I want to mention, right? Um, before cooking these, right? Now, I, now I, I did mention that, you know, you're going to want to cook these, but before you actually cook them, you're going to want to max this out uh, to 100. You, you don't want to cook this when your skill point is at zero, because at zero, you're going to have 0% chance of extra cooked food, right? You don't want to cook that at 50, right? Because 50, 50 out of 100 means you're going to only get a 10% chance of cooked food. So, uh, you know, the best thing to do is max this out first so that you can get your best chance of getting that extra cooked item. All right, so um, the next question, uh, uh, how do you get the amber larva, right? Um, well, the, the, there are two possible ways of getting them. They have a chance at appearing in a larva chest in the cave biomes. These larva chests will have a light beam shining on them. And this is what the um, larva chest looks like. It's one of these little pink boxes, right? And it's got that little, kind of like a little larva, um, I guess, a worm over the chest. So let's, oh, I'm going to open this up, right? I've actually found an amber larva in one of these um, larva hive chests before, and it kind of looked like this. Uh, I, sorry, no, it was it was actually this. Uh, it kind of looked like this, and there was some some other item over here and here. But the point was that the Ember Larva actually did appear in, in a um, Larva Hive chest uh, in the uh, the cave biome that I found. And I also got lucky because the Larva chest appeared at the same time with the Amber Larva. But it could just be an Amber Larva by itself and something else. And it's also possible to get a, uh, a Larva Helm uh, with an Amber Larva as well, right? Because the Larva Helm also appears in one of the chests. All right, so then that's the first way. Now, this is not guaranteed. Not all larva chests will have, um, not not all the larva chests in your map spawn uh, have a a, a a a guaranteed amber larva. It's it's just a chance. the The only thing that that is guaranteed, the second way, is to find one of these uh, amber larva point of interest, and that's what you see here on the screen behind me. This is what the amber larva point of interest looks like. Um, all right. The this this point of interest can uh, only be found in the Forgotten Ruins. Before I um, I explain my search method, I want to go over with you some visual game mechanics. Okay, uh, when looking at the game screen, right? Let me turn on the the mini map here. Uh, let me or the grid lines here, right? Um, so when looking at your game screen, your character sees a distance of 14 and a half tiles to the left and 14 and a half tiles to the right. All right. Uh, it is possible for you to also, your character is always going to be in the middle of the screen, right? You're never going to find your character standing right here on your visual screen, right? You might see him stand a little bit uh, halfway here and a halfway here, right? So these are the two the two areas or the areas that he's going to mostly be standing in the middle of the screen, right? So it's possible for you to stand halfway uh, 
on the screen, and then that means that you're going to see a total of 29 tiles, full 29 full tiles, if you were to stand halfway between here and here, for example, right? But if you were exactly standing on the middle column or the middle uh, center point of the screen, I'm exactly right now in the middle of the screen, then you can see a 14 and a half. So you kind of see a little bit of a half over here, and then 14 and a half over here, and a little bit of half over here, right? So that means you see a, t a full 28 tiles. Uh, sorry, sorry, 29 tiles, right? Because 14 over here, 14 over here, and plus the middle, that's 29. But if you were to stand halfway, right, you'll actually um, get 29 full tiles as well, um, this direction and this direction. But you won't get to see the... Um, the sorry I sorry you'll you'll get to see a full 30 right full 30 my bad full 30 because the half on this side and the half on this side will merge to become one and I'll show you that in a little bit here all right so and then uh, so now that you we've covered like you know what your character can visually see left and right let me enable the um, the mini map all right because See how this is the mini map at the top of the screen? And this is what we're going to use for the uh, search method, right? Now, I just wanted to go over this real quick so that you understand uh, my search method when I explain it to you. All right, so this mini map, if you don't have this mini map in the top left corner, let me turn off this grid line here, right? This mini map over here, then you're going to want to check your settings and hit the escape button. And the settings are here. And then click on the UI settings and make sure that you you have this enabled, right? Show mini map on. Because if you have this off, right, then you wouldn't be able to see this little mini map on the top left uh, right corner here, right? So let me blow this up. Uh, and I created like a, a blown up version of this, right? So that you can see. So this giant box right here is just a blown up version of the mini map over here. And it, this is something I, I did in Photoshop, right? Uh, so in this in this little mini map here, the center tile is represented on the mini map. Oh yeah, and the mini map basically shows sixty tiles um, of the game world at, at any one point in time. And I actually place these little wall tiles along the bottom so that they actually show up on the mini map. So that's why you see these all these little dots here. And I was able to count up all the little dots to figure out um, how many tiles are represented. And so the mini map at any point in time will represent uh, 60 tiles of the world view relative to your 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 character. And that's always going to be at the center of the mini map. All right. And uh, so this red line right here represents you down the middle, right? Right. This little red line um, here is uh, your the tile that you're standing on, and it also represents okay down at the the mini map also represents 30 tiles to the left of your center point right and then it and it rep and that doesn't include the, the the red column and then it represents 29 tiles to the right of your red column right the red the red tile that you're standing on and that does not include the um, the red line so, that, so if you add the, the, the numbers up, right, 30 plus the, uh, the red line and then the 29, that's a total of 60 tiles. So that's what this little mini map represents, right? So even though you um, only see uh, 14 tiles to the left and 14 tiles to the right, the mini map goes beyond that, right? So that's why, like, you know, if you, if you notice, like, you know, you see any 29 at any point in time, you can actually use this mini map as a way to uh, count out your tiles without actually having to manually count it while you're while you're doing your your larva amber larva search, right? All right, so let me um, let me turn all this off, and then we will we'll take a look at the uh, the amber larva. Okay, so if you look at this amber larva right here, it's always going to to look like this. It's got this crystal amber casing. It's always going to have the um, the little gold sparkles, the the gold ores hidden in the walls. So if you look at the mini map, you'll see that there's like you know four yellow dots. Those are the four yellow dots of the um, the gold ores, right? It's always going to have the uh, the wooden crates. Those are always going to be there. So this is what what the amber larva will always look like on the on the map, mini map, and it's always going to have like the little um, 
little water lake right here as well. Okay, so that's the, the key thing. Oh, and, and the light beams, right? So you can see here, the light beams are always consistent. It's always gonna shine on the, um, the gold ore to the left and the gold ore over here to the right a little bit, and then obviously in the center. So the width between here to here, let's take a look at it. We're gonna walk over here and show you. It's, it's about seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these are the, the visual aid for finding an amber larva, okay? And now, now I said before is that my search method, we're only going to be concerned with going up and down. We don't care going left and right, okay? Because if you were to search for the amber larva, right, going up and down, like if you were hugging, if you were like say here, and going up and down, you can kind of see a hint of it on the left. It's a half. It is a half, right? Um, but let's say you were you're gonna miss it, right? And my search method is to use the the uh, mini map as a guide, right? So if I were to go all the way to the left of this, right, and see how the search path here, I've got this yellow right here, right? I can move all the way to the left and hug or and use this mini map here and I stop where I, I basically stop where the where the um, the yellow path hugs the uh, the black border here oh yes and I forgot to mention right the let me mention it again um, or go over again the mini map always has these particular properties right there's always going to be a, a yellow line or a gold line bordering the mini map and then inside the mini map is also a a, uh, a black line right so that is that is the property of of the um, the mini map. So let's say like if I went too far to the left, you see how that gold just goes off and it's covered by the inner black line of the border, or the inner border of the mini map. So you want to go all the way over here. Remember I said between here to here is roughly 29. So if I were to stand on this column right here, right, and this is 14 tiles over, I now see, I now see the um, the uh, the gold ore and the crate right here, right? So even if I missed it on the other side of my search, I'm going to actually catch it on this side because this is the 14 tiles, right? This is the uh, 14 tiles to the left of my search path. So this is my new search path right here. Because I missed it on the other side, I now can actually catch it on the, um, the left side of that other path, right? So I look to the right and I'll always see it. So you can't actually miss the amber larva, if you use the um, the 29 tiles apart search method, right? This is a 29 tiles apart search method using the mini map as a guide. So w one of the things is like I, before, you know, when I was searching for the amber larva or even giant mushroom, I was a very new at this whole exploration thing when I started the game. And I didn't realize that I can actually use this mini map as a way to, um, to help me go through exploring and searching for a point of interest, right? So I, so I jumped on Discord and I asked somebody, hey, you know, what's your method for searching amber larva? And the guy basically told me that he did 14 or 15 tiles apart, you know, so he, he went up and down uh, with a 15 tiles apart, which is this, this grid line here. And so he basically went all the way over here until he, he couldn't, you know, he can only see, so let's say like he, he, his method was like this, right? And he went all the way over here until he couldn't, he can still see or not see the, the torch, right? And then he, this is like 15 tiles apart, basically, right? And so that method is actually a terrible method, okay? And I, I didn't, you know, think about this until now, realizing, well, it's a terrible method because it's redundant, right? If you actually go up this direction, you already see everything on the left. Right? Why would you care to go like this, 15 tiles apart, because you're going to see the 15 tiles to the right again, and that's exactly the same thing. So that's kind of redundant, and it's not important. Right? And then he also said that he did 14 or 15 tiles, uh, or 14 tiles like vertically. So he went and actually searched left and right. Now, my search method does not include left and right. You don't, you don't search left and right. The only time you go left and right is is when you go from one search path to the next search path, right? So you will have to dig left uh, or right just to create a new search path, but the search path is always gonna be up and down, 
Okay. Um, oh, oh, and let me, let me point out also, right? So another thing about the Forgotten Ruins. Now I said like um, the the Amber Larva uh, will always appear inside the Forgotten Ruins, and that is true. So that means that it can also appear in this inner section of Glorm's Path, right? This is Glorm's Path up here, and then this is the um, the max um, distance here, right? So it it actually can appear anywhere here, and it can actually appear anywhere in here, right? As as um, as a search, um, uh, as as a, um, a a search coverage area. Um, all right, so let me let me go over here, and I can just show you briefly um, using the the grid here. Remember, like I, I mentioned that the uh, the mini map has has thirty tiles this way, and then twenty nine tiles this way. So the left and right edges of the mini map is slightly off. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, it's up to you to decide if you want to go all the way to the uh, hug the left or or the right, right? Because notice, like here, right? If I were to go down this way as my search path, right? And I pick a direction and I keep going this way, right? And eventually, I, I just you know, I, let's say I hit the end. So I'm not gonna go all the way to the end, but let's say I do hit the end right here of my search, and it happens to be like right here, down here somewhere, and I, I hit the end, right? So I'm gonna have to go left, right? And then the search here goes all the sorry the um, the search path here. If I go left and I hug this this edge right here, right? If I go all the way over this way, it, it goes off. But if I go this way right here, it's still on the uh, on the, the visible edge of this border here. The reason why you want to do this is because you know sometimes you, you go around or sometimes you get distracted, and then you want to come back and you're like, okay, well, how far back is my search path? Right? You can actually use this guide. To continue where you left off, right, and then so from here to here is 29, right? But notice from here to here it's 30. So this black edge is off by one, right? So if I were to go, let's say if I were let me eat this food here so I can move a little faster. So if I were to go to the left or sorry the right of this and using the right edge or left edge of this border, right? For example. If I go to the left and I hug the black line all the way here, okay, from here to here is actually 30 tiles now to the left, right? Um, and then counting the center gutter here, that's just 31. So keep that in mind. So between here to here, though, is it is a full 29. All right, so let me see here. No, it's, it's a, it's, um, it, it's actually at 29 is in between, right? Is in between. So this 29 tiles in between does not count the um, the, the path, right? But if you went if you went all the way this way, right, and did the half, or sorry, did the uh, using the right side as your your um, your guide, right? Like here, do you see it? See, I did the right side, and I and I decided to go up and down this way as a search. So here. I'm just going to use the the edges now. Now you can see this full this full path here and this full path here. That means the tiles from here to here in the middle is actually 28, right? Because I'm actually standing in a half. So if you shift my grid over a little bit, right, you're you're the you're only going to see 28 here, right? From this from this search path to this search path, right? And then over here, I'll do. I'll show you again one more time, so you can actually see what I'm talking about. So this side here, I don't see the full path or the full tiles on the left and right, right? So that means this here to here is actually um, a full, a full 29 versus over here, it's actually a full 28. So I'm just pointing out a little difference here. So if you were to use the left hand side of the um, the mini map. You're going to be one tile off, but that's okay. It, I mean, it still works if you if you do, uh, but if you want to be consistent, you just want to you just want to be like one tile off to the left. All right. So let me uh, let me show you examples of this. Okay, let me take this little grid off because I do want to show you some examples. Um, all right. So here, this is one of the worlds that I uh, searched uh, it was my offline world, my original first 
offline world. And uh, I'm standing next to an amber larva here. And let me pull up the map. And so this is what I did for searching it. I just went all the way down. Um, I think I went all the way. I went this way and I went all the way down, straight down right here. And then I think I went down this way and I went up this way. And I just went basically up and down the search path um, of the uh, the forgotten ruins. Right. So if I, I go all the way up here, you know, and I just decide, okay, well, that this is the... You know, this is no longer the Forgotten Ruins. I just went, I just went left, I think, right like this. Um, and then I went all the way down this way, and I went all the way this way. And I came down, and I went up to here, right? So I went over, I, I managed to see it right here. So you can't really miss it, right? If you actually use my search method um, for this, because you'll always cover visibly left and right, 14 tiles in each direction, and 14 tiles each direction is basically 28. And uh, you can kind of see it here. So this is one example of an amber larva. And, and notice, right, it's it's got the same same signature hallmark, right? The the four, four dots, four yellow dots has always got the light glow, right? So if I were to search it from this side over here, right? Um, well, let's see here, I think I blocked all the walls. Oops. Let's see here, right? So here, I actually did miss it. You see that? I missed it. Well, I mean, I didn't miss it, but I mean, if I wasn't paying attention, right? Because it's kind of hard to see that half. And I kept hugging this wall, and I kept going straight down. And I eventually went all the way down until I couldn't because of the barriers right here. I went this way, and then I went up that way to see it. All right. So let me show you another example. And you guys can totally skip this, you know, uh, these examples if you've already seen enough. Of, of the, um, but I mean, if you already understood the search method I explained to you. So here, let me go load this up. I just want to show you examples so you can actually see how I managed to find all my amber larvas. So here I'm standing in front of another amber larva, right? And again, in this in this video, I did a little search here in this world, right? What I did was I just started going one direction. I went all the way down here. I did. I I ended up finding you know a clay. So I knew this is the wrong direction. So I just went, I think I went back um, this way over here. I went all the way, all the way up this direction. Oh, sorry, no, I went this direction over here, I think, yeah, to the uh, to the left. All right, I went all the way over this direction here. Um, and I, I also started, um, started going back, I think, this way, just to make sure I cover this line here. All right, so I get that little line going. And I just went all the way up and down, and so I found, I found my, my, um, my forgotten runes area, and I kept going this way. And I so I used my left method, and I went this direction, and then I, and then when I went all the way down this way, on this side, I'm like, oh, well, this here ended up being forgotten runes and not clay, right? So I realized that I needed to keep going further until I find um, clay or or the end. And so as soon as I realized after like three three line searches up and down, I'm like, oh my god, my forgotten runes is actually possibly this this half of the screen, right? And so I kept going like this, and I'm thinking, okay, well, if this is this is the forgotten runes half, that means I'm gonna have to spend a long time searching this. And that means that this right here, at the time, this right here was not searched, so I decided to go back and search this section right here just to knock it out of the way because I knew that if I were going to go up and down this path here and it wasn't in any of this area and I had to go back and it was it was this segment right here I would have kicked myself in the foot so I or in, in the butt here because I left out a small section that I could have just knocked out of the way earlier so I went back and I just I did a little search and this is this is it right I found it going left and right and again like this this was um, up and down, All right? And I, I used the I, I used the the the, uh, the one tile over on this one here, All right? So that's it's an even twenty eight in the in between. You see that now here? You see how I got the little edge on this side where right here? That was my search method, All right? Um, or my original search path, and I just did left, and I got that on the edge here. All right, so let me show you another one. Um, let's see if I got, and then I'll also talk about 
Let's see if it's actually. Uh, I showed you that one. I showed you that one. Here we go. This the sea world here. The um, and then I'll show you a world where I didn't find any. And it's it's very rare. I mean, out of like the twenty that I found, um, only one didn't actually produce a yes, am an amber larva. So here, what I did was, you know, when I first started the game, I uh, I, wa I went one direction, all right. So I went all the way down here, and I went this way, and I went all the way up here, all right. And then I just went this way because I, I realized that that was roughly clay. I mean, you can't actually see it, but when you're actually here, you will actually will see, you know, traces of the clay. So I, I just cut across this way. I went all the way down this way, found the forgotten runes. Um, or sorry, ended up finding some clay here. I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna cross this a little bit and see what's going on to make sure there's clay here. And then I found forgotten ruins, so I kept going this way. And I went this way to the left. I went this way, and I was like, okay, well, now I found clay. So that means this is probably the edge of the clay and and um, forgotten ruins edge. So that means then this half right here must be must be the forgotten ruins, right? So then I just went. I think I went and ended up going back over this way and I just started going up and down this path here just to create a path a search path right and then I went th this way over right and then I found the forgotten or forgot found clay but I kept going anyways just to create like a search path and I went up and down zigzag and you can see like my zigzag not zigzag but my um, my search path moving moving towards the the right side right and I eventually found it, you know, went this way, and I think I went like this or something like that, yeah. I just decided to cut across this way and then cut across this way just to clear out this area here. So yeah, this is my um, my uh, Forgotten Runes, and let's go ahead and break this, or, or my uh, my Amber Lava Search path. Let me go ahead and break this, and then yeah, I can, you can see, you know, you can you can mine the break this either punching it if you have enough high enough mining skills, or you can actually just use a pickaxe. It doesn't really matter what you do, but you, you can punch this. I guess. See that? And that's my amber larva here, and that's pretty much it uh, for for getting amber larva. You just break it, right? And then this is what the amber larva, you know, point of interest looks like. The light beams will still be here, and you can break all this stuff off if you want, you know, whatever. All right. So the other thing I wanted to show you. Just, um, you, I mean, you guys can skip the rest of this video if you want. It's not important, but if you wanted to see an example of a giant mushroom um, and how this search method will help you with finding a giant mushroom, um, I'll show you here. So, let's see here. I think I've got the giant mushroom um, on this on this world here using this character. Okay, and now a giant mushroom usually will have uh, the point of interest of the giant mushroom uh, will look something like this, like a, a giant, um, you know, a chocolate chip cookie on the mini map, and it's got these little water spots right here, which looks like the little chocolate chip on the on the little mini map at the at the top here, or the world map like this when you pull it up with your your map tab, and. Uh, the, the thing about the giant mushroom is that it's wide enough and it's got the light beam here, right? It's always got the point of interest always has a light beam. And then you can actually find this using this search method right here, the hug the left or the hug the right method, right? See uh, see where I uh, I have the uh, the mini map right here on the, the little search path from my previous search path, right? So I went left and right, right? So if you were to go up and down like this, you know, and you see something like this, and you're like, you totally miss the giant mushroom on this side. See how I totally miss, I kind of see mushrooms, but this is not necessarily a giant mushroom because you can't tell. It could have been just like a little light. So it's not obvious, but if you were to go, you know, um, from the left, oh yeah, all the way up here, or to the right, and you know, and hug, and then using the, the search path guy like this, right? You can't miss it when you, you go back through the other direction, right? Because you, you'll see it on this side. If you don't see it on the other side, you'll see it, you'll always see it on this side. 
You can see how like I went this way and my search path is over here, hugged on the mini map, right? So you'll see it on this way. Now the thing, like I said earlier, is the thing about the giant mushroom is that the point of interest, you can use this search method to find a giant mushroom point of interest, but giant mushrooms uh, point of interest aren't necessarily um, always guaranteed in the um, in the dirt biome or the clay biome, right? Uh, this one actually happens to have it in my other world. I did not get any giant mushrooms uh, showing up in the search path of the uh, the clay biome or the um, or the uh, or, or the the clay biome like over here, right? And then uh, in some worlds, I actually did get two giant mushrooms in my main world, and I can show you that in a little bit here. Um, it actually had two point of interest of giant mushrooms. And then some world did not have any giant mushroom point of interest. It, it actually just happened to have a giant mushroom hidden in the dark. So that's why like, I don't recommend trying to hunt for giant mushrooms anymore, uh, because with this search method, you can actually get a, uh, a pretty good... 100% uh, chance of almost 100% chance of getting the plus 50 amber larva uh, instead. So let me go ahead and pull up one more time just for my main world because I should have forgotten. I forgot to show that to you. Okay, and then here in my main world, right, I actually have the giant mushroom point of interest right here. And one right over here. And it, like I said, it kind of looks like a chocolate chip cookie. So if you if you were to find it. And so in this world, I actually had two giant mushroom point of interest. So if you're you're you happen to be lucky, right? I mean, you could use the search method that I I, I showed you today to go through your your um, dirt biome. You might actually find uh, one of these giant mushrooms. You might actually find another one. But if you don't, then uh, it could be you know you could be inside your your uh, clay biome, right? And you can use the same search method if you want to. I mean, I, I would obviously use the search method to clear out your full, full, um, or search through your entire rooms, uh, forgotten rooms, and then search through your your entire clay clay biome. But as far as like using the search method on brand new worlds, right? I would just focus on using the search method only on the forgotten rooms, uh, looking for the amber larva because that's guaranteed. The, because you know, if you were to use this method and search through the entire clay biome uh, on a brand new world, and that's not your main world, then it's it's really pointless, right? So one of the things you do is like after you you finish searching for your your amber larva, you can just delete your your worlds. Uh, oops. Oh, you can't delete from 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 in here, but um, but yeah, like one of the things that you can do, right, uh, when you when you search, right, you basically start creating a new world, you know, just uh, searching for your amber larva and just type in, you know, whatever it is that you want and then you delete it. So that's what I did was I, I just created a brand new world. And then after that, you, you're done with your amber larva search, you know, you can go delete the worlds, right? So whatever world that didn't have the amber larva or actually, or the world that you've already found it, you can just delete it and then continue creating new worlds over and over. Um, I guess, oh, oh yeah, let me show you one more thing here because I, or, men, or let me mention one more thing. So I did find a world where there were no amber larvas at all, and I completed my search completely everywhere. And uh, once in a while, you know, you might actually find a world that's bugged. Uh, it's not because the search method is bad, because the search method does guarantee you finding an amber larva. So the search method will guarantee you finding something uh, if you actually do it correctly. Um, uh, but in this world right here, like I did not find any amber larva, and I actually covered the left and right side using my search method. And the only thing I can think of uh, is it's it got bugged out. I mean, it's entirely possible that uh, Glorm actually deleted it, so it could have spawned like somewhere in between here, and uh, Glorm actually might have just wiped out whatever it is that that's the the amber larva point of interest because I did see like a point of interest down here where the glorm just basically wiped it out uh, half halfway so I, I don't know uh, what the reason for the uh, the bug but it is supposed to be hundred percent guaranteed I mean one of the other things I thought of is it's possible that 
the um, the boss arena basically has to spawn anywhere the um, Malagas has to spawn inside the Forgotten Ruins. So I think that it is possible for the Malagas point of interest to wipe out the um, the Amber Larva. So that, that's the only thing I can think of on, on what might have caused this particular world to be bugged. But if you get a bug world and you don't find it, just delete it and move on. Like it's not even worth trying to like search every everywhere on it like I did. I, I end up searching everywhere in the Forgotten Ruins just to see if it, it possibly bugged out and, and appeared in there. And it did not. Um, so yeah, that's that's what happened um, on one of the worlds. So it's a 99% chance of, of getting the uh, Amber Larva with a small 1% chance of, of getting a bug world. So just keep that in mind. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, and uh, good luck on your search method. And uh, now I'm just going to cook this little amber larva. And then uh, I'll see you guys later. And then maybe we might get a prop. We'll see. Let's let's find out. Uh, actually, let me see what I, what have I already cooked. I don't think I've got everything. Huh? Did I do a glow to it? I did do a glow to it. Did I do a meat? I don't know if I did a gold meat. Or a mushroom. Let's see if I can here, let me cook it with a mushroom. Yeah, that's new. Alright, so let's make me cook this amber larva with a mushroom. And let's hope that it procs. And if it procs, woohoo. Otherwise, you know, um, click on the link down below where I show you an example of it procking. Nope, it did not. But there you go. And uh, remember, I, I said 1449, right? So if I were to eat this. Um, oh, yeah, it's because of the max health. Huh. I got I get the max health from it. And I also get the uh, the uh, well-fed. But yeah, once, once all the max health, the temporary max health fades and the well-fed, this should say 1449. All right, guys. Thank you for um, for watching this video. And if you if you liked it, uh, be sure to um, to hit the uh, the sub sub button. Uh, until next time, talk to you guys later.